I'm Zach Miller, Editor-in-Chief of Tearsheet. The following was produced by Tearsheet Studios. We worked with fintech software provider Autobooks to create a four-part podcast series on the evolution of business banking and how banks can better service SMBs through a changing mindset, partnerships, and integrations. With APIs and embedded finance, it's getting easier and easier for software firms to integrate financial products into their offerings. So, software used by the construction industry, for example, can incorporate payments via a tie-up with a fintech company. At Tearsheet, we've had two conferences devoted to this trend. Apple, Google, Facebook, and the biggest brands in the world are launching financial services through software integrations. Everybody talks about how SaaS companies are embedding fintech into their solutions. So, you know, SaaS, software as a service company, uh, if you go out and build a direct-to-consumer application and say, you know, maybe you make a, an invoicing tool for a construction uh, vertical, if you will. So you are really good at helping construction companies build detailed invoices that they can send out to, to their clientele. It only makes sense as a SaaS company that if you start to do that, that you start to then embed fintech into your application. So you embed the ability to accept a payment. That's Derek Sutton. Derek leads marketing insights at Autobooks. Autobooks is a full-service, small-business product suite that integrates directly inside of a bank's existing digital banking channels. So think cash flow management, sending digital invoices, accepting online payments, accounting, and financial reporting, all directly integrated inside of a bank's online and mobile banking channel. The firm works with community banks all the way up to top 10 banks, like TD Bank. So I think these SaaS companies, when they're looking at their valuations and then they're looking at payment company valuations... They're starting to see these returns on on revenue, these returns on multiples that that are um, just crazy uh, once you integrate fintech. So it only makes sense that these SaaS companies would want to embed fintech into their solution. Let's take a company like Wave. Uh, Wave was, is an online accounting solution um, and really more or less say a, a full service kind of a small business um, product suite at this point in time um, for financial services, accounting, et cetera. But when Wave started out, it was strictly just a free online accounting service that monetized its customer base by selling advertising. With a growing user base, Wave had a good solution, but it was really hard to monetize the customer base through that model. Plus, users were requesting that their accounting service offer payments functionality. And so when they started to embed financial services, uh, starting with payments and then moving into lending and, and things of that nature, all of a sudden their revenue grew. They started to scale the company and the next thing you know, they sell to H&R Block. Now they offer banking services as part of that relationship as well. So you can see they had a, a really great SaaS company. They had a solution that you know hundreds of thousands and millions of users wanted. It was just hard to monetize through a traditional SaaS model. And by in, embedding or integrating payments and then um, additional financial services like lending and, and things of that nature into the application, they were able to effectively monetize that customer base that led to an exit. And so I think that's what a lot of these SaaS companies are looking at with FinTech. It's um, it's taking their existing addressable market, being able to embed something that um, just makes sense, you know, like payments in, in most uh, cases into their solution and then effectively increasing the revenue opportunity per customer, per unit that they have inside their application. And so that trend will not stop, especially as you start to see exits like this take place. And so more and more SaaS companies are gonna continue to do this uh, on the embedded FinTech side. This hasn't been lost on banks. They're watching the evolution of financial services move outside the walls of their institutions. That got Derek thinking, what if the roles were switched? What if banks started embedding financial services in their own offerings? You know, we look at that and we start to say, well, why isn't the inverse true as well. Why wouldn't banking uh, organizations, financial institutions start to embed uh, kind of like these SaaS vertical type solutions back into their banking environment so that they could also enable the same type of activity to take place uh, directly with them. Whenever you start to kind of really peel back the onion and think about it, if the if a SaaS company can integrate FinTech because there's a need there, why can't um, you know, basically like SaaS type solutions or vertical solutions be integrated back into the banking system. And that at the core, that's really what Autobooks has done. And so you could take all of our components and go directly to the consumer. So we're an integrated um, uh, small business product suite that includes a general ledger for a business owner to manage their accounting needs through. 
We can also execute um, vendor invoice payments through bill pay. We keep track of financial reporting so they can look at a profit and loss statement, access a balance sheet, things of that nature. But most importantly, we enable small business owners to send digital invoices and get paid on those online or share a secure payment form link that they can get paid through. Now, small businesses definitely need help with cash flow. Autobooks could have gone directly to the market, acquire new customers, and onboard them. Instead, the firm decided from the onset to partner with banks. That way, the software firm can provide these services directly from the financial institutions SMBs bank with. But instead, what we found is that there's a need for these, these entities to, they already have a banking relationship. They're already managing their finances directly through a bank. And banks really want to better serve the micro, small business, and nonprofit community. And so why not just integrate our solution back into the banking ecosystem? Instead, banks embed a software solution like Autobooks directly inside their banking environment. This way, financial institutions enable a business owner to create an invoice from online banking, send it to a customer, and get paid on it. If the other is true, as you said, then we believe the inverse is true as well. And we think that that's a really interesting concept for banks to consider moving forward of how do you find niche vertical fintech solutions bring them back into the banking ecosystem and then directly integrate those uh, for a vertical that you, that you deem valuable and that you really want to serve better service and monetize moving forward. But with so many fintech solutions out there, it isn't easy for a bank to evaluate all their options. I asked Derek what kind of advice he'd give to banks looking to integrate new fintech functionality to service SMBs. What I would say to any financial institution that we talk to, and we talk to a lot, not just about auto books, but kind of about this category of, of integrating fintech. And the thing that I commonly say, Zach, is just if you're a financial institution, you know which verticals you best monetize as an organization, or at least you should. And just look at those verticals and say, you know what, as an organization, we offer you know, a, a wide variety. We go pretty wide with our products and services. Uh, most community banks do, but there's a certain products and services or category lines that really drive most of the revenue for the financial institution. And so let's say that that's mortgages. Go evaluate fintech solutions that enable you to go deeper with mortgage lending, as an example. So don't look at the broad nature of fintech. There's a lot of different solutions you could look at. You could go kind of uh, starry-eyed and, and start to, um, you know, go try to reinvent your consumer banking experience. But at the end of the day, that may not be the most profitable or wise decision for you to do as an organization. It may just be better to go simply slim down the evaluation and say, you know what, we have deep, uh, you know, capabilities with mortgage lending, but we want to go even deeper. We want to find ways to actually monetize this user base even more or, or grow it um, because of our current efficiency and mortgage processing is, is really good, but we think it could be even better by bringing in a fintech solution that could level up the ability for us to take in online applications. Maybe we can book, um, you know, mortgage loans faster. Maybe we can, you know, increase our, our, our margin on these by um, doing more with less people and things of that nature. So I think that's the way I would look at it and evaluate it. So how does a bank begin to prioritize fintech solutions? 2020 was an eye-opener for many institutions. If it wasn't clear what the weaknesses were in their distribution, it was now. If you claim to service small businesses, you better have shown up with the functionality they needed in the middle of the pandemic. And so if, let's say, small business banking is important to you as a financial institution and your business owners struggled to um, accept payments from their customers, make deposits with your organization, get access to capital, um, apply for accounts or, or online, you know, PPP loans and things of that nature, maybe that's a category that you need to really focus on. And when you choose to focus on that category, I would start much of that evaluation by one, looking at how you monetize that customer base today. Is it, are you monetizing it well, or could it be improved upon? And then once you kind of get your arms around the market opportunity within your organization, I would highly encourage every financial institution to go talk to their end customers and not just the best customers, but go solicit feedback from your small businesses or your business account holders and ask them about their banking experience over the past year. What needs to, don't ask them what needs to be improved, but just ask them, hey, talk to me about your banking experience. How 
was it for you to transition your business to accept customer payments? Did anything change in 2020? Going deeper, understanding what your customers want requires doing some real legwork, really getting to the bottom of their pain points. Banks need to listen and ask about the right things. When you ask people these types of questions, don't lead the witness with, you know, hey, tell me about your banking experience because they're just going to, you know, most people are, are nice and they're going to tell you nice things. Really probe and ask them, hey, how did you do business last year in 2020? What changed? Um, and just really dive into that. You will quickly surface many different new opportunities and ideas through a conversation like that where you just ask a business owner how they had to change during 2020 that will propel you as a financial institution and in making meaningful improvements moving forward. This sounds more and more to me like the concept of a marketplace bank, where the bank owns a customer relationship and customers can choose from different products from different providers. I look at my friends at Incredible Bank up in Wisconsin. I think they've done a really good job about uh, not only just embedding fintech, but understanding a vertical that they um, bank really well, which is like they do luxury RV lending as an example. And so they've really kind of dialed into this into this market niche and they kind of own the end-to-end -end experience. So they own everything from like how to, um, they created a digital banking brand around it. They have online applications kind of built towards this category. They really understand the end-to-end -end nature of what it takes to acquire, procure, finance these type of vehicles. And then they're working with vendors to basically integrate and make that whole experience even better from a digital banking perspective. So I think that's a really good one. Uh, we um, you know, have partnerships with companies like Lending Club, who was formerly Radius Bank, and they do a really good job of this as well. It's about finding fintech solutions that really meet the needs of their customer base and embedding those back into their banking solutions. So, you know, uh, Radius actually won uh, Nerd Wallet's best, you know, online digital banking experience award the past two years, I believe. So if that's any indication as to how banking looks moving forward, I think that's a really good one as well. Derek likes to call this form of integration, fintechs embedding themselves in banking, embedded fintech. He thinks the collaboration between these two entities is going to continue to grow and grow deeper. I think it will lead to a couple of things, Zach. I think these um, SaaS companies are going to continue to grow. They're going to continue to grow in value, and they're going to be real threats to traditional banking. And so let's take the micro small business banking segment, um, just because that's the one I'm closest to. But if you look at what happened in 2020, mm -hmm. you had all sorts of non-bank vendors basically start bank accounts this year. So Square applying for their banking charter, which has been something that's been in, in the mix for a while. But then you had companies like Wave, the online accounting application, um, offer bank account services this year. QuickBooks, obviously, you know, a company that many banks actually pay for the right to integrate to the data, just became a firm competitor in the banking space by announcing a bank account this year as well. So in addition to their ability to you know, um, do online accounting, they now also offer merchant services. So the ability for a business owner to get paid, they also offer a lending marketplace and now a bank account with a real-time debit card. So they're firmly you know, competing against banks across the country for small business relationships. And so I think what you're gonna see Shopify you know, the e-commerce company started a bank account. They're on and on and on. I think there are like seven or eight additional entities that all started bank account services this year. Larger companies are realizing that they sit in a very powerful place. They own the relationship with their customers. And their customers are looking for more functionality from their providers. It's an in into launching more financial services. And so I think these larger companies are realizing, hey, if we are kind of directly at the tip of the spear of the relationship with the business owner... And we're enabling the, uh, a marketplace, so a business owner, to go out, solicit customers, sell goods and services, and collect payment. Why would, don't we just become the bank? Why not just start the, the bank account and then access to lending? Because we, uh, um, as, the, as the tip of the spear of controlling the customer payment, at this point in time, really control the customer relationships. So let's just let them bank with us. And so I think that's a trend that you're going to see in this market segment. And I would argue that unlike consumer banking, or high-end corporate treasury banking, the most ripe for disruption is this micro and small business category because of that, because financial institutions just haven't done a really good job about enabling uh, business owners to accept online or digital-based payments from their customer base. And so you see this flood of companies really attacking that market. So I think that's a trend 
as to you know what's going to move forward. You know, these SaaS companies are looking at all these banks, and these banks have you know their logos on sports arenas, and they're they're doing all these uh, the, these you know big marketing spends, and that's because um, they've really captured a large customer segment. And they're monetizing that customer segment really really well. So it makes sense for a SaaS company to want to bring some of that into their environment. Banks and credit unions compete with firms on different sides of the spectrum. As banking continues to get more competitive, these firms are rationalizing what products they should provide and where they should turn to partners. And then I think on the other side of that equation for banks and credit unions throughout the country, I think you're going to see uh, many institutions start to slim down their offerings, or at least the ones that are most efficient and probably scale moving forward. I think they're going to start slimming down their offerings to their customer base. It's kind of gone are the days, if you will, of being all things to all people, especially in, in as the world moves digital. So it was one thing whenever the world was more geographic and customers kind of came to the corner of First and Main and there was only one place to deposit a cash and check and get access to lending and things of that nature. At that point in time, you kind of had to go wide and service the needs of the community. Well, now as digital is taking hold and communities are moving online, I think you're going to see a move in banking to get much more vertical in your solutions and offering. And you may kind of use, you know, a, a typical consumer account or, or something of that nature to just to like, you know, general account behaviors, check a balance, transactions, pay bills, et cetera. But when it comes to monetization strategies, I think community banks and banks in general are going to go very vertical and just go very deep with those types of solutions uh, moving forward. So how do we get from here to there? How do we get to the point where banks and fintechs are working together to service SMBs, both with their best feet forward? I think the tipping point, though, uh, Zach, is really finding these fintech solutions that, one, um, kind of understand how to integrate back into the banking ecosystem is very important. And so uh, one, of the, one of the tipping points to make this more common are the vendors then opening themselves up for integration. And I think you're seeing a big concerted effort of that moving forward. And so, you know, we work with vendors day in and day out and, you know, their ability to create APIs and software development kits or SDKs to enable us to integrate, um, you know, much more efficiently and easily is happening. You know, we've gone from even Autobooks as being kind of a growth stage company really commercializing in 2017. Now, you know, heading into 2021, within four years, we've taken deployments from, you know, it taking these ad hoc kind of core integrations, these kind of SSOs into digital banking that maybe took six months to deploy down to weeks. And so we're actually, you know, moving financial institutions through our procurement process in four to six weeks in some cases. So they're going from, hey, this is uh, us, we're interested, evaluating the solution, signing a deal and getting live, you know, in, in less than 90 days, which is, I think a big leading indicator and kind of a shift of like how the market's moving. And not only that, they're immediately partnering with us on go to market to, you know, not just integrate the solution, but have success with adoption and utilization of the platform as well. And so we offer as a service, go to market capabilities really built around and messaged around our vertical solution tied back to the banking relationship. So these partnerships aren't just technology solutions. They should include the go-to-market and support that gets integrated back into the banking environment. So I think that's the leading indicator, and that's kind of like the leading model of how this could work. Um, one, it takes the, the kind of the legacy technology providers and digital banking providers opening themselves up, which they are. And then two, it takes this um, kind of like this open nature of the bank to say, hey, you all do something that we just can't do ourselves, but we want to partner with you and lock arms with you in doing so. So you all are really good at building user interfaces that enable SMBs to, to manage their finances, if you will. You also offer really great ways to go to market that we don't traditionally support inside of our financial institution. How about we partner up and we you know, integrate your solution back into our environment. We'll wrap it around our service and support arm and distribution channels, and let's go have mutual benefit and success in going to market together. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with Autobooks' Derek Sutton. This is part two of four of a series we're running with Autobooks on how banks can best service their small business customers.